My network spans across the country with multiple data centers and extends to the cloud. Now that's a lot of infrastructure to manage. If I want to get the latest updates for my Nexus environment, I would have to log into every single data center and touch every single switch in order to upgrade it. And that is time consuming. I want to troubleshoot network outages and get insights into my telemetry data and even identify anomalies before, before they become a thing. I want to be proactive rather than reactive. But in order for me to be able to do all those things, I need a solution that will bridge the gap between my on-prem and my cloud environments. I need a way to manage my network from anywhere at any time, quickly and easily with one solution. Data centers are no longer centered. Data and applications are everywhere. Businesses are operating across a distributed landscape, resulting in a high level of complexity. With all of this happening, how can businesses simplify their operations? All right, to solve this problem, Cisco has a very cool solution called Nexus Cloud. So what is Nexus Cloud and what does it do? Nexus Cloud is Cisco's SaaS solution that offers you the simplest way to manage, deploy, and operate your Nexus networks from the cloud. With Nexus Cloud, you'll be able to easily add sites and discover your ACI and NXOS fabrics. You can get comprehensive network visibility with dynamic topology views. Quickly identify and remediate anomalies. You can also view traffic trends to plan your network. Nexus Cloud is AI-driven to automatically and intelligently schedule your upgrades. You can manage your data center's energy consumption with real-time visibility across the network. All right, so I gave you a lot of cool information about Nexus Cloud, and I'm sure you're all really excited to actually take a look at it and see this thing in action. So I asked my friend Gerald to join me and help demonstrate Nexus Cloud. So let's go ahead and take a look. Hey, Gerald, it's nice to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Happy to be back. Thank you for joining us today and talking about Nexus Cloud with all our viewers. For sure. Yeah, it's an exciting time, I think. Nexus Cloud is either uh, about to launch or has already launched, depending on when you're seeing this video. So I'm happy to, to join you today and, and inform your viewers a little bit about what Nexus Cloud can provide for them. Awesome. All right, then let's go ahead and get started and take a look at this demo. For sure. Um, now, what I've heard about Nexus Cloud is that it's super easy to use, very intuitive, and that it will guide you through all the steps to actually use it. Because typically when we as engineers inherit new applications, there's always a learning curve involved, right? So how easy is it to actually navigate and learn Nexus Cloud? Yeah, good question. So. I mean, I think you pretty well highlighted it really well there. Um, what we're doing with Nexus Cloud is we have these sort of um, uh, windows that come up and tell us how to sort of do things inside of Nexus Cloud, right? So here we've got this Meet Nexus Cloud and it walks us through understanding a little bit about what Nexus Cloud is going to do for us. So it sets up the terminology, it sets up a little bit of the overview, what we're going to be looking at today. We can go to operate and we can go to analyze and it really helps us understand what the platform can deliver for us as a consumer of that platform, but it also guides us through the process. And to illuminate that fact, just one, one more step, uh, we have this getting started map that we can go through and we can use this for onboarding into Nexus Cloud. So to your point, very easy to use, simple interface and a hand holding guiding kind of approach as we walk through all of this. That's awesome. So glad it's going to be super easy for everybody to use. So now let's go back a little bit, Gerald. Remember when we were talking about Nexus Dashboard Insights and we talked about the visibility that we're going to get within uh, one view? I heard that there is something called Global View within Nexus Cloud that gives us something similar. Can you talk a little bit more about Global View and what it does? Sure, yeah. Global view is actually the screen that you will load onto every time you load into Nexus Cloud after you first onboard your your uh, your first site. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but this is what you get, right? You get the global view, so the the view of the globe, <laughs> as uh, as it's ap aptly named, I believe. 
um, and you see your sites on here, right? But that's not all. The rest of Global View gives you a lot of information just right, right here, right on this initial screen about everything that you can do inside of Nexus Cloud, right? So you get anomaly view down here, you get an advisory view, um, you get whether or not your anomalies are trending up or trending down, or maybe they're flat. You get endpoint information, all kinds of stuff, just right here on this initial screen. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll get more information about your sites. You can scroll to the right here and get other interesting information about a deeper dive into your sites. You can go down and get an anomaly count. So you can see here that um, our anomalies had gone up since eight days ago, up to 33 anomalies, and then they're going back down. But we, we saw this little spike in, in uh, anomaly trending. So we're saying that it's trending up. We can see advisories, same same sort of information. If we go on down, we can get external traffic information. So we can see what is ingressing and egressing our network. Um, and again, the little I button here gives us a little bit more information about what we're seeing when we're thinking about external traffic information and how we measure it. So again, a way to handhold you and walk you through how uh, Nexus Cloud gathers that data and then how it utilizes that data to help you make intelligent decisions about your network. And then finally, we get the inventory screen where we can see all of the inventory. We can even open inventory from here. Um, we get you know a lot of good information about um, the details of each one of these, and that's it, right? We get to the bottom and we're all caught up, we're all good. As we add more features and capabilities to the platform, they'll show up here in this global view and you can keep scrolling and getting to the rest of that data. Got it. Now, is there a way within Nexus Cloud where we can manage our software upgrades? Do you have an ability to do that within Nexus Cloud? For sure, yeah. In fact, right here on this inventory screen that we're looking at here is this software details. And you can see it says up to date when we're not moused over it, but when we put our mouse over it, we can click it now and get details. And when this comes up, this will show us a little bit of a, a high level around the versions of software that are out there, the version of software that we're running, and we can even get information about running an analysis on our um, infrastructure to understand if we upgrade to this latest version, what is it going to do? So if we think about what that's doing, it's gonna tell us some very interesting information like, hey, we wanna be careful if we do this upgrade because perhaps you have a host that's single connected to the fabric. It's only got one leg into the fabric. Instead of being dual homed, it's single homed. So that would be, uh, that would be a potential cause for an outage if we were to do this upgrade, we also get things like after the after the uh, upgrade is done, these are the bugs that you could potentially um, pull in using that upgrade into your environment. And we see that you're using features that this bug could be triggered upon, right? So it's a way to understand bug scrubbing, but also um, understanding before you do the upgrade, the way that it could affect your environment. So it's, it's a, a feature that's still being built a little bit. It's not quite complete as of this recording today, but it will be uh, in, the, in the feature set by uh, general availability. Got it. Okay, well, that's good to know. Now, I have a question, Gerald. What about if I'm in a highly secure environment, right? What if my environment is air-gapped? Is there a way to send a, the telemetry data up to Nexus Cloud in an air-gapped environment? For sure, yeah. So here we're on the sites view, and we can see here on sites that we have um, a few online sites. But if we add a site, we can actually go here and we can do an add of a snapshot. And so what a snapshot is, is when we have no internet connectivity on your controllers or switches, we can still onboard those in a Nexus Cloud. We download a simple script, that script runs, it gathers information from the data center switches, it pulls that information into what we call a tarball, which is just a, a, a file that has everything inside of it, all the, the, the data inside of it, and we upload it here. And then when we do that, then what we get back in the uh, the sites screen here is the ability to see snapshot sites. And so now we can see all this information from these sites that can't be online for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what that reason is, but now we can get information about the health of that site, um, an understanding of the inventory and everything else for those sites. Got it, so snapshots, good to know. Snapshot sites, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. So maybe you can help me with this next question then. Yep. So how can I use Nexus Cloud to get a list of all my inventory, right? All my sites, list them out, see what I have out there. Is that something you can help me with within Nexus Cloud? And then if the answer is yes, can I filter it down so I only get a list of the sites that I'm interested in instead of seeing everything holistically? 
for sure. Yeah, let's explore that a little bit. So in inventory here under operate view, we get all of the, the inventory for all the sites. Now what we're looking at here are the controllers. In this case, we've got some ACI nodes or some ACI pods out here. And so we have some APIC, APIC controllers that live out here. But if we go to switches, we can see all the switches for all the sites that we have inside of the infrastructure. This is a fairly small um, instance of Nexus Cloud. So we don't have a ton of switches here, but if we had a lot, if we had hundreds potentially in this list, then we can use this filter by attributes, right? To go down and see, well, I wanna look for a specific model. I wanna see if I have any 93 180s in my infrastructure. And, and sorry, I did that a little wrong. I wanna do contains 93 180. And if I hit enter, now it's only going to show me here. It's gonna filter out based on the 93 180 request that I sent to it and validate that these are the ones that I have in my environment. These are all EXs and FXs. And so now I can see, okay, this is the 93180 type that I have in my environment. So it's a nice way of limiting your view inside of a section. And we get that, the filter view throughout all of the menus inside of Nexus Cloud. So we have that capability of limiting our view down to what we really want to focus on and see inside of Nexus Cloud. But I want to show this topology view really quickly because for anybody who's watching this video and is familiar with Meraki, they might have seen something that looks similar to this, right? This kind of streamlined, simple to use, um, expansion kind of idea around um, the topology view. Now we can go down here and we can see all the devices that are plugged into it, right? We can see the, the virtual machines, the endpoints, the uh, APIC devices that are even plugged in. We can see everything that's plugged in right here uh, in a very easy to use methodology, I think. The other thing that's really important about Nexus Cloud is the ability to view problems in the, in the data centers, right? So much like in the Nexus Dashboard Insights video that we did last time, you can go here and you can see all the anomalies and configuration uh, you know, mistakes or just problems that are happening within the data center. And you can understand what's going on from a criticality level and then what the actual problem is. And if you click on one of these, you can actually see who it's impacting. In other words, which leaf nodes or spine nodes it's impacting and then how to resolve that issue with some pretty intelligent uh, actions behind it. So in how do I fix, I can see a recommended solution. So check which one should be assigned to this IP address. This is a duplicate IP problem. Um, and I can click through this and I can very easily see ways to resolve the problem that is this duplicate IP issue. So it's just a nice way of being able to track all the anomalies and tell you when you're having problems uh, inside of your environment. Now, and I want to take one step back and analyze a little bit about what we're seeing from a reports view. Yeah, so when we get down to the reports section, what we see here is a handful of reports and we can see a conformance report and a sustainability report. And we have a couple of other reports at the end here that are incomplete as of right now, as of this recording, that are coming soon, right? So that's the great thing about uh, having a SaaS platform is the ability to digest new capabilities and new features into the platform without having to do any upgrades, right? We just log into the to, to Nexus Cloud the next time and we will have these um, potentially available to us to be able to run these reports. So it's, it's, it's a neat function and it's a neat way to kind of show off the power of having that SaaS platform. Now, there is something I'm interested in here, Gerald. I'm looking at these reports and the one that's standing out to me the most is sustainability. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've seen a product where sustainability reports are actually built into the solution. Yeah. Can the sustainability report show us information on the power consumption in our data center, the actual amount of money we're spending on power in the data center, and the emissions that are coming out of the data center. Is that something this report can show us? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Let's dig into it and look at it really quickly here, because all of those things that you just described is exactly what this report is for, right? When we hop into it here, we get um, that we're looking at February, right? So obviously February is not, not that long ago, just, just ended a little like a week ago, right? So now we can see information about how February looked for us from a consumption standpoint. So this was the, the consumption as far as money goes. This was the consumption for power. And this was how much we emitted based on the power consumption for around emissions and the CO2 that we, we uh, essentially put into the atmosphere, right? Based on this power consumption. But it doesn't just stop here, right? So now we can get granular information about how much did it cost daily to run this data center um, or these sets of data centers rather. How much uh, energy did we use over the course of the days of the month, right? So the last few days of the month, we had a power spike for some reason. 
We don't know why yet, but we can start digging into this now and figure out what happened. Um, and if we go down, we can see total emissions per data center site. We can even see the efficiency of those data centers and if they were efficient at all, how efficient were they, things like that. This has to go, this kind of goes back to the uh, whole external uh, fabric or external traffic uh, analysis that we did earlier in the in the talk. So we can see a lot of different information here. And the coolest to me, I think, is the fact that we can see our energy mix for all these data centers. So we're using, um, you can see C methodology here and you can click and understand exactly what we're doing, but we're using this electricity map API to go and digest based on these data center locations. This is the type of power source that you have for each one of those uh, locations. I just love this feature. A lot of our customers are starting to ask about this, and I think it's gonna be powerful for now and the future for sure, as we continue to focus on sustainability for our data center product sets. I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time to show our viewers Nexus Cloud. For sure, yeah, this was a blast. I, I love this product. I love Nexus Dashboard Insights as well. Um, and so I I'm happy to have been here. I'm happy to have uh, been able to talk with you a little bit about this and uh, yeah, have a great day. Thank you. We'll talk soon and make more videos. Yep, for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye bye. Managed and delivered from the cloud. Anytime, anywhere. That is the power of Cisco.